Okay, so the math dealer here, and I'm going to kick out a few limits that might be helpful for you calculus students that are sitting out there, because I know it would be helpful for my calculus students. Okay, so this first one, all right, as x is going to zero, all right, so I want you to think about that. If I'm going to zero, all right, and I plug in my zero, I'm looking at this and I'm like, wait a minute, that's going to make this guy undefined. It's going to make it into an indeterminate form, all right? So what I need to do here is I need to be like, okay, let me check the limit as x goes to zero, let's say from the left-hand side, okay? So if I'm going into zero from the left-hand side of this, think about that. That means these numbers are going to be less than zero, meaning negatives, right? Well, if I put a negative number in for x, that's going to kick this guy over to a positive. True statement, right? And of course, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, you realize the smaller this denominator gets, the larger the value gets, of course, right? The value is getting larger. So this guy is actually going out to a positive infinity, okay? And it's because, let me say it again, all right? Because as, uh, I will even erase that. What? Am I actually going back over something? I know, right? Crazy thought here. As x is going off to in infinity from the left-hand side, these numbers are negative, okay? They're negative, a negative and a negative, yeah, going to make a positive. So this guy is actually shooting off to positive infinity. Okay, now let's check it from the other side. If x is going to zero from the right-hand side, now I'm like, okay, my numbers going into zero here are positive. Well, if my numbers are positive, this thing is getting larger and larger, and then I'm subtracting it from three. So these guys are actually going to negative infinity because if I'm putting positive numbers, right? Here we go again. If I'm putting positive numbers in here and I have a negative there, well, negative times a positive, back in the day you learned was negative. So I'm taking all these numbers in a negative direction away from three. Well, that's gonna go to negative infinity. Well, since these two don't match, guess what? That's a DNE, right? There is no limit as x goes to zero of this function. Okay, let's look at this next one. This next one, all right? So oftentimes we see these, and if we've been doing limits for a while, we're thinking conjugate, but we're not thinking conjugate because, oh, by the way, this is going to infinity. It's not going to zero, okay? If it was going to zero, now that's that world where you got to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. You've seen pictures, right? So, but that's not what this is. That's going to zero. This one's going to infinity. So all you're asking yourself is, okay, who's winning, right? What I mean by winning, I'm like, which function is it the numerator or the denominator get is getting larger faster? Okay. So which one's winning? Right. Well, if I'm dealing with square roots and down here I have a linear, yeah, linear is going to beat out a square root. I know it doesn't look like much, but linear will win. Okay. Well, if the denominator wins, the limit goes to zero. Okay. So I always tell my students, if the denominator is getting larger, faster than the numerator, the denominator wins. Okay. Now, here we go. Check out this guy. Right now I'm going to negative three. So when I put negative three in, okay, I actually get a number over zero, which means negative three is actually a vertical asymptote, okay? And I know what you're thinking, but wait a minute, aren't we supposed to do this whole factoring thing and whatnot? Well, if I were to factor this, I mean, let's just, you know, I could shoot out a factoring. I'm not an idiot, right? Well, look at that. The one that's removable here is actually the x minus three. The negative three is still holding in as a vertical asymptote. Okay. Well, fun fact, vertical asymptotes, their limits don't exist, right? Because again, if I take the limit as x goes to negative three from the left side, all right, I'm going to look at this guy from the left side. I've already removed him, so I'm not worried about him. But if I'm putting in a negative number, it looks to me a number less than negative three, okay, that's going to make that numerator negative. And then if I'm taking a number less than negative three, Plugging it in here, that's going to make the denominator negative. Well, negative over negative, of course, is positive. Now, take it from the other direction. If I take negative 3 from the right-hand side, okay, negative 3 from the right-hand side, yeah, that's going to give me a negative number in the numerator, but it's going to give me a positive number in the denominator, okay? Well, negative over positive, of course, lo and behold, is 
negative. Well, since they don't match, yep, D and E. Okay. All right. I know this was kind of fast. Maybe you need to rewind it. I don't know. But this is the math dealer signing out.